thinking back to um, the TCA cycle, if you have an acetyl-CoA, so let's go ahead and kind of draw this out. So if you have an acetyl-CoA, you need, um, that needs to be combined with an oxaloacetate acetate uh, to enter into the TCA cycle. If oxaloacetate is too low, then acetyl-CoA cannot enter the TCA cycle. So, with that in mind, during fasting, so during the fasting state, you have amino acid skeletons being broken down to form pyruvate and therefore th uh, oxaloacetate. But you don't want to use those oxaloacetates to run the TCA cycle. You want to use those for gluconeogenesis. And you use those for gluconeogenesis, uh, it, y you'll have a buildup of acetyl-CoA. In the same vein, uh, you get the same thing happening whenever you have uh, diabetes. Because in diabetes, you can't bring in glucose. Your oxaloacetate is going to be low due to the inability to, of the liver to consume glucose. So let me draw really quickly uh, what an acetyl-CoA is going to look like. So you have um, a CH3 and it's connected to a carbon with a carbonyl group and that's connected to the sulfur and coenzyme A. So you can see that our acetyl-CoA is essentially two carbon units attached to coenzyme A. And if you can think of ketone bodies as four carbon molecules that will carry the acetyl group. You'll remember that CoA is a pretty large molecule. And so you don't want to just pump out a whole bunch of acetyl-CoA into the serum. So if you want to uh, mobilize the acetyl groups into the blood for use by other tissues, you attach them to these, you make them a four carbon chain, and these are ketone bodies. So you can think of ketone bodies as four carbon carriers of two carbon acetyl groups. Now acetone is a special case, and we're going to get to that in a second. So the big picture is, let's say during fasting or diabetes, your adipose tissue is going to be mobilizing glycerol and fatty acids, the glycerol is used for uh, gluconeogenesis to produce glucose, and the fatty acids go through beta oxidation to produce acetyl CoA. The buildup of acetyl CoA forms into ketone bodies, which are pumped into other peripheral tissues uh, and broken back down into acetyl CoA and used in the citric acid cycle uh, to produce energy. So during the beta oxidation, you get an increase in acetyl-CoA, so A-CoA. And an increase in acetyl-CoA will inhibit pyruvate dehydrogenase, and that will conserve pyruvate to form oxaloacetate for gluconeogenesis. And as long as the cell has a high energy charge, now this is cellular energy charge, not the body. Anytime the cell has a high energy charge, it will actually inhibit citrate synthase. So citrate synthase, which this is the enzyme that uh, combines oxaloacetate with acetyl-CoA and forms citrate. When that's inhibited, your amount of acetyl-CoA inside the cell increases and is used to, pr to make ketone bodies. So the production of ketone bodies is basically a function of acetyl-CoA production and its use in the TCA cycle. So anything that's left over becomes ketone. So whenever you have insulin signaling increasing, you stop exporting fatty acids to the liver and you at the same time reactivate pyruvate dehydrogenase <clears throat> and so the excess acetyl-CoA uh, will start to combine with oxaloacetate. Now, as I said before, acetyl-CoA cannot be exported into the blood 
However, acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate are both highly soluble in the blood and they can easily be taken up by peripheral tissue. Now the thing to remember is that these are both acids and as acids if you overproduce it you're going to get a ketoacidosis. Now the stepwise uh, mechanism is similar to uh, fatty acid synthesis for the first couple of steps so you get two acetyl-CoA's condensing into acetoacetyl-CoA and then a third acetyl-CoA combines with that and you have uh, beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl CoA, and that gets acted on by hydroxy methyl glutaryl CoA lyase. So, this is where it's different from uh, fatty acid synthesis. So this lyase splits it off into an acetoacetate and an acetyl CoA. So, out of the three acetyl CoAs that you used, you get one of them back, and two of them are used to. Uh, so, acetoacetate is a ketone body and then depending on the amount of NADH you have available uh, usually acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate are produced in about equal amounts. Now acetone is formed by the spontaneous decarboxylation of acetoacetate. So you can see I have four carbons my, my fourth carbon is a CO2 minus so if a CO2 breaks off of that I have three carbons now acetone is just exhaled so whenever somebody has ketoacidosis they're exhaling a bunch of acetone and it gives their breath a fruity smell and so that's one of the indications of ketoacidosis is if their breath is, smells kind of fruity they're not chewing gum they haven't eaten in a while now the brain the brain loves glucose but second to glucose it loves ketone bodies so if beta-hydroxybutyrate will first be converted back into acetoacetate producing a reducing equivalent and then acetoacetate will be uh, converted into acetyl-CoA so that it can enter the TCA cycle. Now this enzyme beta-ketoacyl-CoA transferase is a, a key in this reaction and it is not present in the liver and the other thing you have to uh, recognize is that succinyl-CoA is used in, succinate is formed, so succinyl-CoA is used to produce the acetoacetyl-CoA and by using that up you, you lose, so GTP is produced from succinyl-CoA in the TCA cycle, so you lose the equivalent of a GTP. So you gain a reducing equivalent, you lose a GTP, and then you gain an acetyl-CoA. In fact, you actually gain two acetyl-CoA's, so you get the acetyl-CoA that's already attached on here, and then by adding another coenzyme A, you get a second acetyl-CoA.